Do I have the power to manifest? How do I learn to manifest? Who manifests? What manifests? How does manifestation take place? The fastest thing, even though it's not a thing, in this known universe, according to so-called modern science, is light. Nothing travels beyond the speed of light, although there are some mathematical models and scientific ideas which suggest there could be a possibility of something beyond the speed of light. You know, how far is moon from us and how far is sun from us? It takes about eight minutes for the rays of the sun to reach Earth. In the universe, millions of miles are normal, but it is beyond that. So we talk in light years. How many years it will take for the light to travel from that distance to our place? It's billions of miles, literally. There are stars in this universe whose light has not even reached the planet Earth. And future people who will reside on the planet Earth may actually never receive the light from certain stars. That's how vast this universe is. And what we see in the sky, the light that we see from the stars, may be from the stars that don't even exist anymore. Our mind travels faster than the speed of light. We can think of something instantaneously, it is there. The mind doesn't need to travel distances. So one may say the mind is faster than the speed of light. Mind is subtler than the photon of light that the mind can conceptualize and visualize this universe and beyond, that this universe is nothing but a figment of this mind, that this mind is more powerful than this universe. And we're just talking about some of the conscious mind stuff. And then we have subconscious mind, which is even more powerful, which contains memories from all journeys that this particular life or soul has taken ever in eternity. Look how powerful. Obviously, it includes all the previous lifetimes, but wherever this soul, this Atma has journeyed, every single dimension of those journeys is stored in the subconscious mind. And those patterns in the subconscious mind determine everything about me today. I am who I am as a sum of all past experiences, known or unknown, remembered or unremembered, believed or unbelieved. And we access that subconscious mind through the Phyllis Crystal tools, through the language of the symbols and images. And perhaps some of the hieroglyphics in the Egyptian pyramids speak volumes that the so-called modern scientists have not been able to decipher through the conscious mind. In spirituality, mind is nothing. As a matter of fact, mind is an obstacle. True meditation can be summed in one phrase, die mind, kill your mind. It is mindlessness. Meditation is nothing but mindlessness, nothingness. You start meditation when you become mindless. You are meditating when you're mindless. You end meditation when you're mindless and so forth. And you cannot be saying I'm meditating because then you're not mindless. Spirituality deals with the spirit, the duality of spirit. Spirituality deals with who I really am. My true self is my Atma self, is my spirit. I'm going to use the word Atma because it's more encompassing, more correct, more complete, based on my background and understanding. 
So I truly am Atma. Whether I have realized it or not realized it, for now, let's intellectually understand or accept or believe that I am Atma. Whatever I am, I am. You can call it the I am principle. You can call it the I principle. You can call it Atma. Whatever you want to call it. The individual soul, the individual self, the true self, this mind, this body, and all the experiences related to them belongs to me, belongs to this Atma, belongs to this self, belongs to I. If mind is more powerful than this creative forces, the creative nature, how much more powerful than it is the complete mind, including subconscious mind, and how much more powerful is the spirit? According to scriptures, the power of the entire universe, I'm not talking about just the earth, just the solar system, Scientists are discovering rare diamonds that they are finding in certain meteorites which are not found in the earth. It's all basically compressed carbon because of extreme temperature, pressure, and time variables. Those created in earth and those created in other heavenly bodies. And God knows how many millions of years ago those diamonds were formed. So when we are talking about, thinking about manifestation, we are talking about bringing into physicality, bringing into our life, bringing into our future, bringing into our present, the financial, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual aspects or dimensions of experiences. We have discussed this whole Trakanna Shuddhi, the unity in thought, word, and soul. <laughs> Thoughts, words, and deeds. Having an alignment in what is inside of me and what I communicate and what I think and what I feel and what I do because that gives me power. That may be the formula, but where does the strength, where does the power of manifestation come from? How does the manifestation get empowered, materialized? What is the source of it? The source of it is my true self, is my Atma. And when I know that, I don't need to know anything else. There's absolutely nothing beyond it in this known universe. Apparently, according to scriptures, this entire universe, known and beyond, is just a speck compared to my Atma my true self, that I, my true self, is more powerful than everything that is there, seen or unseen, experienced or yet to be experienced. So self-realization is nothing more than realizing myself, realizing my Atma, realizing who I am. And perhaps the easiest way to achieve that, arrive to that conclusion, is negating what I am not. I am not this body. I'm not this mind. I'm not these thoughts. I'm not these experiences. I am beyond. I am beyond. I am beyond. Whatever works for you, and wherever and however far or deeper you can take it at this moment, take it. It's not a race. <laughs> it's like increasing my capacity, even though I'm not increasing my capacity. So spirituality is nothing but getting rid of peels and pips or whatever doesn't define me anymore. Getting rid of the obstacles, getting rid of ideas that have accumulated or accumulated in my this life or previous life, beliefs, experiences, just let go of all of that stuff. They are fear-driven. Just keep only those experiences in life that are useful for you today. They are meaningful for you today. If something is bringing you down, just let go of it. 
breathe it out, drop it. Just like when we were kids, we knew the difference between the bigger size of the cookie and the smaller size of the cookie. We chose the bigger. When we were given the choice between good and bad, we chose good. When we were given a choice between happy and unhappy, we chose happiness. When we were given a choice between pick a current life situation and apply it to it. And remember, I can always choose love. When there's an unloving situation, don't choose it. <laughs> choose love. And what does God look for in me? What does God look for in anyone? What is God looking for at this moment right now in this universe? Am I a good person? That's it. <laughs> and you know, you are. And I certainly am. So I love me. 